Wake up. Hey, Sam. You want to eat? Come on, wake up. I'll leave the bump sleep it off. But hide that bottle of booze. I took that. The Blandish girl. Worth millions. I was right there in the same room with her. See that necklace she's wearing? How much? How much you guys figure it's worth? Well, it was diamonds. Goddamn right they're diamonds. Fifty grand's worth. You hear that, fellas? Fifty grand. And Heine knows where she's gonna be wearing them tonight. Picture taker. Oh, you're a big fella, aren't you? A regular Tarzan, eh? Can't you stop him? Okay. Stop it, Jerry. Beautiful. Leave me alone. Let me go. Let me go. You're making a fool out of me. Jerry, enough! You're really impossible. Let go of me! You had to get through that darn angry. Being stupidly jealous, Jerry McGowan. I've got a right to be, haven't I? No, you haven't. We were just having fun. That's all fun. Will you take me home? Let's go. That's the way you feel about it. Huh? Let's go for Christ. Hey, what the hell's the matter with you? Move. I hope you know you're driving like a damn fool. Some kind of imported racing car. Just take him when you get alongside and crowd him off. Will you really embarrass me tonight? You know what? My father was really right about you. You're a dope. Talk about dopes. What about this guy following me? You just please take me home. If you feel that way, I'll take the shortcut. Come on, get him! Take the old road back to town. Man, driving like a maniac! We'll take him. He must be intoxicated. He's intoxicated. <laughs> Joke. I suppose you're cold sober. You got him, Sam. You're crazy, fools! That's it, Sam. Just like that. Side to side. Get off my road! Get out of my way! What difference does it make? You don't have to pass them. Look, I just want to get home. Just get me home and get me there safely. Stay here, Sam. You fellas crazy? You ought to be arrested! Gary, be careful! Connor, watch it! Jerry, he's got a gun! Oh, my. Okay, okay, I don't know. I'm real good. 
Say anything about the thing. Just say we're hiding out at Johnny's for a couple of days. A couple of days? Just tell him a couple of days. That'd be 90 cents. She took six. I got no money. Hello? We'll be at the old Johnny Hutchins place. You go ask Pendleton Road. Excuse me. How you doing? Goddamn right. <laughs> hey, Bailey, how you been? Ain't complaining, eh? <laughs> That's my boy, Bailey. <laughs> Looky here, a car full of real desperados. Hi, Sam. Hi, Eddie. Big boss man, Frankie Connor, in person. And that is some real classy looking broad you got there. Pretty high class for the likes of you, ain't she? Hey, Wappy. Get a load of this. Nice seeing you, Eddie. Oh, boy, she's had a skin full. She ain't gonna have to take on the three of you, is she? <laughs> <laughs> you kidding? I guess we better get going. Boy's in a hurry. What makes you think that, Eddie? We just gotta get this kid home. Uh, yeah, I just blown a headlight bulb. You got a replacement? Let's see. What is that, new packet? Yeah. Yeah, I think I can help you. We interrupt the program to bring you a special news flash. Millionaire son and former star college football fullback Jerry McGowan was found shot to death two miles north of Kansas City earlier tonight. His bullet-riddled body was found beside a dirt road near the Anderson Farm on Route 3. The car he was driving was found deserted nearby. The girl Jerry McGowan was escorting, Miss Barbara Blandish, 21-year-old daughter of prominent Missouri socialite John Blandish, is reported missing. Since then, no trace has been found of her, nor has she tried to communicate in any way with her father or the police. Police suspect kidnapping, although no ransom demand has yet been made. More details on the big news in 15 minutes. And now... Back to the fabulous music of Henry Bussey and his band from the Edgewater Beach Hotel. Yeah. Guess this is it. Hey, kid, you got any idea where those friends of mine were headed? The guys who just took off? Yeah. No, I wouldn't, sir. I... They didn't let on, huh? Well, well I... I heard one of the fellas on the phone. Yeah? Yeah, he... Said he was going to, where was it, uh, Johnny Hitchens' place. Hitchens? Uh, Hutchins' place. That mean anything to you? No, kid. Uh, how much is the bulb? Um, 12, 12 cents. Here. Keep the change. I gotta use your phone. Johnny. 
Johnny, open up. Who are you? Come on, open the goddamn door before I put a slug through it. I didn't recognize your voice. It's okay. Come on, lady, move. If you open your mouth, I'll blow your goddamn head off. You ain't gonna have no trouble, Johnny. We just looking for a place to hide out for a while. You okay, Sam? Yeah, she's still asleep. Bailey. See what they want. Go get out there. Get out there. Hi, Bailey. Hey. The boys were in some hurry last night. Trying to get that crazy drunken dame back home. <laughs> this her country place? She don't live here. <laughs> you know something, Bailey, I already guessed that. Connor inside? I'll get him. Uh, no, no. You stay here. Just ask him to step outside a minute. Hey, Frank? Frank, come out here. You hear me, Connor? Come out here, will you? Just asking about the girlfriend, Connor. I can tell you we dropped her off. <laughs> Why is he lying like that? I mean, what's he lying to us for? I ain't lying. He is lying. They got her. They got her right up there. They got her. Good, Johnny. I tell you what you do. You go right up there and bring her down here. With pleasure. Connor, why you want to lie like that? I mean, didn't your folks teach you no better? Slim, we got a necklace worth 50 grand. Now the girl's worth anything you ask. Now listen to me. We'll keep the rocks, and you guys take the girl. Slim, that's a fair deal. Well, I don't know. Let's see the rocks. Okay. Like Ma says, there's real punks. I mean, real punks. <laughs> Let's see your rocks, Bailey. Oh. Hey, they 
Miss Purdy. <laughs> yeah. Hoo-wee. <laughs> What's she screaming for? Well, stop her screaming! Proof we ain't gonna hurt you. Go on. Hey, I'm giving it back to you. Come on, girlie. You're giving your present. Go on, take it. You want me to put it on for you? All right, I'll, I'll put it on. Johnny, and check it out. Let's go, Johnny. Please, take your buddy there for a walk. Ah. Now! Move. Try and move. Please, please. Back a long way. Billy Joe. Billy Joe. Take a sock and run. Run like hell. Go ahead. Oh. <laughs> Give me a break, Slim. I'm okay. Ask Mace. I don't go shooting my trap off. See what I was telling you, miss? And we come to protect you now. And them other fellas, them's really stupid people. But we're gonna look after you. Okay? Like he says, Slim, not a soul. Well, let's get out of here. Man. What about John? Fighter. <laughs> Eddie, you look after our old buddy Johnny there. And don't you worry, miss. We'll look out for you. 
Don't. Don't do it. Clean up the place, Johnny. Dump the car in the lake, dig a hole, and get rid of these monkeys. Then buy yourself some good liquor and don't go out for a while. You get what I'm saying, Johnny? Just leave it old Johnny. <laughs> I'm sure there won't be any trouble. I'm sure we can solve this to everybody's satisfaction. Would it be possible for me to phone my father? I'm sure he'll pay whatever you ask. You really think so, dearie? How much do you think Daddy will pay? Million dollars. Do you think your daddy will shell out a million bucks to get his precious baby back? That's right, a million dollars. How about that, Eddie? A million bucks. What if he doesn't? Oh, come on, dearie. Come on. Just see what happened to them three punks. I mean, we ain't the kind of people who fool around. Get it, dearie? Well, now. You ain't exactly accustomed to having weekend house guests. But we intend to look after you the very best we can. No trouble from you, and we'll treat you like one of the family. Eddie, will you show the young lady up to our guest room? My pleasure, ma. Which room? Uh, what, what's the guest room? You're going to have my room, Slim. I'm moving back in with your mother. <laughs> I'll assure her, Ma. Eddie can do it, Slim. Ma. I said I'd show her up. Okay, Slim. Right. Now you two run along and play. You're out of game, Slim. You let me know. What's that supposed to mean? What? Well, what's it supposed to mean? Oh, that. Well, that was just a little joke, Slim. You know, like you hear on the radio show. Well, I don't get the joke. He don't get the joke? <laughs> he kills me. Well, your mother said for you two to run along and play. So I said if... Oh, gee. Forget it, Slim. Never mind, Slim. Eddie's jokes ain't funny to me. Jokes meant to be funny. That's right. There ain't no point in them otherwise. That's right. Now run along. You know, Gladys, that's a very pretty girl. Sure is. Yeah. Well, don't any of you guys think you're going to play around with us. Slim got the concession, Ma. Slim? <laughs> Why, you know Slim never messed around with a woman in his whole life. Yeah? What you figure he's doing up there now, huh? They got a dirty mind, Eddie. Are you kidding? I'm telling you, Ma, Slim ain't took his eyes off that broad since we got to old Johnny's. Ain't that the truth, Mason? That's the truth, Ma. Whoppy? That's right, Ma. You saw it yourself. He even gave it a necklace back. 
Oh, right now, that's the least of our worries. Now, let me tell you a remarkable thing about kidnappers. They nearly always end up getting caught. He's right, Ma. Let me tell you something about kidnappers. The only time they get caught is after they hand back the party they snatched. And that ain't gonna happen to us because we ain't gonna do no handing back. After we get the dough, we kill the girl. It's gotta be done. We've gotta kill the girl. Up fast on the outside. It's Tell about the Reds, but it gets the end of this race. I haven't called about the Reds. Swift. You are Mr. Fenner? Some guys think the jockeys are crooked. After that resort, you gotta figure it's the horses, huh? My name is John Pete. Yeah, I know, I've seen your pictures, Mr. Blandish. I'll tell you what, if you brought your own cup, you can have a drink. No, thank you. Chief McLean suggested that I get in touch with you. He recommended you as being uh, hardworking and trustworthy. <laughs> Did he say all that about me? He said you might make a useful go-between. Well, they've asked you for the ransom, though. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> a million dollars, that's pretty impressive just reading about it. Are you refusing this assignment, Mr. Fenner? <laughs> Mr. Blandish, the last time anybody walked through that door and offered me a job was two months ago. Now, if you want me to deliver the ransom money, fine, I'll deliver it. How much do I get? Captain McLean suggested your services would be available for $200. Well, as you probably guessed, McLean is a real pal of mine. All right, 200 it is. Thank you, Mr. Fenner. Oh, I expect to receive final instructions tomorrow. We'll go to the bank, collect the money, and then you'll deliver it at the appropriate time. I ain't all that crazy about food. <laughs> Matter of fact, I hardly ever eat at all. Except pies my mom makes. And cookies. She makes some really great cookies. Your mom make good cookies? Well, does she? I can't remember. Have you heard from my father yet? Well, not yet, but... Doc read him a letter and... Uh... Well, don't you worry about it. Uh... You want to try a cookie? No. These are the cookies my mom made. You know how many of them I ate already? I ate about 12 of them today. You know something? I, n I never did ask you your first name. Barbara. That's a real pretty name. What'd you do that for? I told you before, don't touch me. <laughs> well, what's wrong with touching? I ain't nothing wrong with touching. You know something? I'm stronger than you. <laughs> yes, I am. I'm so strong, I bet I could kiss you. <laughs> <laughs> Now, 
That's just playing a little game. A little kiss. Why won't you let me kiss you? Why? Because you're odious, that's why. Look at you, you're filthy and you smell. Do you really think I'd let a cretinous half-wit like you touch me? Wouldn't you call me? Cretin, half-wit, simpleton. <laughs> Get out of here! You dirty, filthy pig! <laughs> you filthy... <laughs> You'd make her my friend. You promised. And now she's doing it saying bad things. Ma, she said a spell. She called me a Christian. She said I told you, Ma. No, she told me. Take it easy, son. And you promised. Take it easy. Ma, you promised. It's the truth. Ma, you said you'd make her my friend. You promised. Ma. What are you going to do? Get your ass back in there, dearie. Don't suppose nobody ever give you a real good beating, did they? Now, you going to be nice to my slim, dearie? You miserable cow. Do you really think I let your boy lay a hand on me? I'd burn in hell first. Saving it all up for some rich husband, huh? You know what you are? You're filth. You're scum. You and your idiot son. <laughs> Come on now, dearie. No need for you to go calling us names just because we're ordinary folks. <gasps> you want me to hit you some more? Because if you don't, you better get nice and friendly with Slim. Get it, dearie. Oh. kind of a person. Hey, I'm talking to you. <gasps> you want me to get Doc to take a look at you?
Grandpa said for you to be nice to me. Look, I just want to talk to you. Did you hear from Frankie? Did I hear what from Frankie? Well, Frankie owes me, right? And on top of that, I didn't know they were going to snatch the dame. Snatch? What dame? The Blandish dame, for Christ's sake. Don't you read the papers? Says they're asking a million bucks. Says my Frankie's asking a million bucks? No, sweetheart. It doesn't say Frankie's asking. Not by name, it doesn't say. The point I'm trying to make is I didn't know they were going to snatch the girl. I mean, kidnapping. That's serious business. She falls under a bus when they got her, and it's a capital offense. E even accidental death. What's a capital offense? The death penalty. Jesus, they hang you for that? What the hell is this country coming to? Uh, you got any extra booze, Anna? My nerves is really bad. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Here. You want a rum truffle? It's okay if I get a glass of water, ain't it? See, I just wanted to check on you, Anna. Make sure you didn't say anything. Me say anything? You think I turned my own guy in? I didn't say that. I just mean we gotta be careful. Well, that goes for you too, honey. So don't get any ideas about turning canary. I'd die first. You sure would, if Frankie ever got to hear about it, huh? A million bucks. A million bucks, Doc! What do you think? Everybody right, Mace. One million big ones. Everybody through looking and touching? Eddie Wappy, will you cough? This stuff into the other room. That's a beautiful pleasure. Thank you. 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 Right now, this dough's about as useful to us as a four-dollar bill. Ma, what the hell are you talking about? Well, that makes sense, Mace. Well, it don't make sense to me. You think a bank hands out a million bucks and don't keep a check of the numbers? We made a deal. A certain party is prepared to give us 400,000 clean ones. In exchange for this. Are you crazy? 400,000? We got a million? What the hell are you beefing at, Mace? Yesterday was bumming a nickel for a cup of coffee. Ma, we got a million dollars? Why should we? Shut up, Mace. Listen to what Ma has to say. You'll all get spending money. Don't worry. 400,000 means it will be time. Legitimate. Hmm? We're going into the nightclub business. Long as prohibition lasts, we make big dough. And gentlemen, prohibition ends and we're in the gambling business. Like Mr. Hoover says, prosperity is just around the corner, boys, and we'll be on the ground floor. Believe me, that is sound economics. All you guys gotta remember is you each got 60. 
56 grand in betting. What do you think, Eddie? I think I ain't never had 66 grand before. That's what I think. You sure? Yeah. You look at it that way? It's the only way to look at it. What about the day? She'll be out of here in a few days. Why not right away? As I say so, Eddie. What you trying to do up there, Ma? Make a man out of Slim? She'll be out of here in a few days. And Eddie, you don't like what Slim is doing. Maybe you should have a word with him. Ladies ain't supposed to drink. Not hard liquor. Oh, is that a fact? Well, as I recall, you don't know very much about ladies, either. I know that much. Yes, I do. Well, this lady likes a drink. In fact, at this very moment, this lady would like a dry, dry, very dry martini. Dry martini? If you don't mind. And don't forget the olive. Olive. That's right, an olive. This is why I always look forward to Wednesday night class. <laughs> it looks very good. It looks good, Ma, real good. Stop talking to Pat. Uh, join us for a little celebration, Slim. What kind of celebration? Celebration on account of everything's hunky-dory, Slim. Except for getting rid of the broad. What's he talking about? You know, Slim. Cuffing off the broad. Hey, Ma, didn't you tell Slim about that? Is it? Is he talking about killing my girl? Is that what he's talking about? <laughs> Shall we uh, discuss this after supper, Slim? <laughs> we gotta do it, son. Ma, uh, you touch that girl, and I'll kill you. I'll kill anybody that touches her. Mother's right, Slim. As long as she's alive, we're all in danger. I don't care. Come on, huh, Slim? You had your fun? Shut your face! You hear me? Shut your goddamn face! Did I ever do anything bad for you, Slim? Now, did I? That's right. Now, you pay attention to your mother, Slim. You ain't taking her away. You ain't. <laughs> Kept out of trouble for a long time, because everybody figured Ma knows best. Do you think I want to see a boy of mine lose his head over some fool girl? I wouldn't let none of them do it. I sure as hell ain't gonna let you do Ma, you think I wouldn't? God forgive me if I could kill my own Ma. I could kill anybody. You guys hear that? That girl is mine. She stayed with me! You got that clear? Okay. Everybody knows the score. She's staying with me! Okay. Okay. Hey, Doc. Uh, how you make a dry martini? Well, uh, that's a... Uh, well, um, 
Uh, you need uh, gin, you need uh, uh, vermouth. Uh, you need olive, don't you? Well, Slim, <laughs> I believe that's right. <laughs> we got some gin. Who's kidding? <laughs> got some Coca-Cola. Maybe she'd like to have some Coke in it, huh? <laughs> Why ain't we got no vermouth? There's not a lot of call for it around this house, Slim. Well, won't you get some? Oh, sure. Here's your gin. Coke. <laughs> and an olive. An olive. Won't you buy a goddamn olive? Sure thing, Slim. Next time we go for groceries, we'll, we'll get some olives. You'll get over it. Sure he will. Just leave it a few days. A few days, sure. Yeah. A few days. Sure, Ma. After all, Slim's a good boy. Always does what his mother tells him. around Frankie Connor. You know, Frankie used to operate out of St. Louis. Thanks, Phyllis. How about an intro, Rocky? Anna, uh, I want you to meet uh, Mark Grissom, Doc. Hi. Hello. And this here is Eddie Hagen. Hi. Hi. Uh, we're going to be taking a little interest in this place, honey. Maybe, uh, maybe we can talk about your act sometime. Oh. Well, you know what they say. No time like the present. Nice to meet you. You concentrate on handling what you've got, Romeo. Mind if I get changed? Anything I can do to help? Maybe we can figure something out. You're real cute, Eddie. Why don't you make yourself a drink? Thanks. Can I make you one? No, uh-uh. You got to work pretty hard in your racket, don't you? Uh, yeah, well, it always pays to rehearse. <laughs> I guess so. Okay, smart ass. What happened to my Frankie? What are you talking about, honey? Cut the crap. You ran into Frankie a couple of weeks ago, and he ain't been seen since. Listen, gorgeous, put that heater away. I'm gonna blow your goddamn head off. I... Yeah, yeah, I, I saw Frankie. Uh, the way I heard it, he took a shine of the blandish dame and skipped town. He what? Took a shine of the blandish dame and skipped town. Oh! Hey, baby, now we can talk pretty. 
Okay, I'm telling you the truth. The word around is that Frankie don't want to hand the dame back. Who told you that, Heine? Heine, the picture taker? I'm not saying nothing. Oh, well, I guess they ran out on old Heine, too. Uh, he the one who told you about uh, me seeing Frankie, huh? No. A kid at a gas station. I don't believe my Frankie would run off with that dame. Oh, look, honey, it's just a rumor going around. I mean, uh, for my money, Frank has always been a straight guy. Now they're just laying low. He'll get in touch with you. That double-crossing bastard. Oh, come on now, honey. I wouldn't be too tough on the guy. Oh, you don't know. I lived with that stumble bump for two years. Listen, I gave him two of the best years of my life. From where I'm sitting, honey, I'd say you still got quite a few good years left. You want this back? Look, uh, if I hear anything, I'll uh, come around and tell you about it, huh? Okay. I ain't kidding, sweetheart. I mean, uh, I'd really like to see you again. Okay? Yeah, okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Can I help you, fellas? Take it later. I'm sure you won't mind, will you? Uh, no. Uh, I'll just put my camera up. Hey, no, no, no. Just give it a Wappy. He'll take care of it for you. Oh, Wappy, huh? Uh, there you go, Wappy. Hey, maybe we can go someplace where it's quiet, like the toilet or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's okay. Go ahead. Oh, you mind right. holding this for him? No, no, no. I'll be back in a couple of minutes. All right, fine. You got a nickel? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. I'm gonna call the cops, honey. You gotta tell them what you know about the Blandy Snatch. Me? I don't know a thing. You know about Connor and Baby. So you're gonna tell the cops. Uh, give me the police report. Hey, let me in, will you? Out of order. Come back in five minutes. Uh, I, I don't understand, fellas. Honest. Look, I, I didn't make a cent out of that whole thing. Just a minute. Give him the message, I you be doing us a favor. Hello, police. Uh, I got some information on the Blandish case. Uh, uh, Frank Connor and, and Joe Bailey were... Uh, Just the names, I Cops are pretty smart. They can figure it out for themselves. Oh, yeah, I guess so. Huh? Uh, okay, if I go now? I, I got customers waiting. <laughs> Fellas gotta make a living, right? Look, I, I don't get this. I, I wouldn't do anything against you guys. N not friends. I, I wouldn't hurt a friend. Look, fellas. You know, old Heine, I, I like helping people. I, I'll do anybody a good turn.
do you think, Eddie? You think Slim made it with the dame yet? Hasn't been up there enough times, Eddie. <clears throat> I'm surprised he went to town with Ma and Doc. Kind of disgust you, don't it? What? Well, I mean, killing the dame's one thing, but letting Slim climb all over her. It ain't right. It just ain't right. You're a good-looking broad like that, and you got a monkey like Slim slobbering all over you. I think you're better off dead. It'll cost you 200, Walker. You got the key. I fold. What do you want it for? Maybe she ain't feeling too good. Hey, Eddie, you want to go up there? Somebody ought to see if she's okay. That's right. Hey, Mace, give me the key. I'll go up. Hey, Eddie, I don't know what you, you heard. But it must be pretty lonesome up there for a girl by herself, especially one so good looking. You all right, miss? I'd like another drink. Oh, sure, sure. You wait right there. Just being nice and so For Christ's sake, Eddie, she's just a kid. Got to learn the facts of life sometime. <laughs> Wappy says you're thirsty. I have a fresh out of martini to go with it. <laughs> well, it tastes pretty good just the way it is. Slim been treating you okay? You know what he reminds me of? <laughs> he reminds me of a slug. A creepy, crawling slug. <laughs> yeah, well, he sure has been creepy crawling up here a lot. <laughs> he has. What's your name? Eddie. And mine's Wappy. Hello, Wappy. <laughs> Aren't you a happy-looking fella? Well, Eddie, I want to ask you something. Shoot, baby. Why won't they let me go? Well, we can't let you go until your old man pays the ransom. I don't believe it hasn't been paid, Eddie. Business shenanigans take a lot of time, a lot of organization. That's right, miss. Lots of organization. Well, why don't you just let me phone my father? I mean, you are. Do you like creepy, <laughs> crawly, sluggy slim? You could just take me away and have all the ransom money to yourself. <laughs> Now, isn't that a nice idea? That wouldn't be right, would it? Be kind of like cheap. I just don't want that slim coming up here again. I wouldn't worry about that, baby. I just want to get away from here. Thank you. 
you guys doing up there? I was talking, sir. Nice. What, what are they doing up there? Like they said, they was just chewing the fat, Slim. Poppy. That's a fact, Slim. We heard the noise. We were just checking if she was okay. What'd those guys do? Did you mess around with those guys? Hey, I'm talking to you! <laughs> Classy crowd. <laughs> Those guys touch you. Did that Eddie touch you? He was charming. Very charming. Charming? Charming? <laughs> he only wants to kill you. That's all he wants to do. Did you hear that? Those are guys that want you out of the way. And you know who saved you? Me! I'm the one who saved you! Then the money has been paid. You're goddamn right the money has been paid. No one ever called me a mug. No one ever called Slim Crystal a mug. And now, God damn it, you make me out a mug. <laughs> Eddie, their mother, they want to kill you. My mom wants to kill you. Yeah. My own mom. Did you hear what I said? Hey. Liquor. Ladies ain't supposed to drink hard liquor. But why? I can't harm them. <sighs> harm them? <laughs> no. All you can do is get us all hung, can't you? You'll be okay. I said I'd look after you, didn't I? Why won't they trust me? I won't say anything. I promise. Please let me go, please. My father will pay more money. You just ask him. He'll promise not to go to the police. It ain't got nothing to do with me. Then let me speak to your mother. My mom wants you dead. What else can I promise? Slim, I'm begging you. You'd be dead already except for me. <gasps> then what are you going to do? Keep me here forever? Yeah. I guess I am. Well, it's better than being dead, ain't it? What happens if you don't want me around anymore? Well, that's kind of up to you, ain't it? I mean, you start hollering at me and calling me names. Well, I ain't gonna like that, am I? I guess you, you gotta start being nice to me. You think? 
think you can do that? I think so. Are you sure? Yes, I'm... I'm sure. Well, ain't nothing to worry about. I really can be nice to you. I better see about some chow. Slim. Please stay. Morning. How are you today? <laughs> Looks like it's going to be a real nice day. <laughs> yes, sir. A real nice day. You ain't mad about nothing, are you? I mean, you ain't mad about last night, are you? No, sir. Well, I didn't force you or anything. Hey. What's the matter? You ain't still worried about them others, are you? I mean, I told you, I ain't gonna let them do anything to you. Not now. Especially not now. Not seeing as how I love you. I didn't say you had to love me back. But you can't like me, can't you? I mean, after last night and all, it, uh, I saved your life. You gotta like a fella for that. car, ain't it? Can you 
guys been up there? No, no, it's not nobody. Honest. Turn around. Well? Well, it's all right, ain't it? Oh, it's a uh, classic. Classic. Who made it? The Ford Motor Company? <laughs> well, that ain't funny. Ford don't make soup. <laughs> well, Slim, I'm just kidding. I knew that suit was good. <laughs> Oh, uh, Wappy couldn't wear no suit like that because he's too fast. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Eddie, you know what? Wappy couldn't fit in a Ford tractor. <laughs> And you suit? Eddie reckons it's a classic. Oh, I'm sure it is. Got these for you. Won't you open them? Why don't you open them? The guys we want. Connor, Bailey, we know they were seen out at the roadhouse. Connor and Bailey disappear. Mexico City, California, Buenos Aires, we don't have the slightest idea where. None of the ransom dough has been circulated. One link, Hannah Borg, Connor's girlfriend. She's been grilled, tailed, bullied, she won't give a cop the right time of day. Where's she hanging out? Rocky Nielsen's old club. She's a singer. Ma Grissom's gang's been running the place for the last couple of months. Hey, Fenner. Yeah? Forget it. Don't you think we've tried? There's just one thing sure in this case. The Blandish girl is dead.
real elegant. Look at this. You know how long we've been working on this? About two months. Night and day, even Sundays. <laughs> All this furniture's imported from out of state. Look at that bed. It's got a double mattress on it. <laughs> and box springs. Gives it a real bounce. No windows? Well, that don't matter. We got some air conditioning. Look at that. Have you ever seen anything like that? It's just like in a movie house. Look over here. This is the cat's meow. You're gonna love this. Look at that. See those towels? Got our initials on them. Look at here. It's got hot water. You can take a bath now. I've got some perfume soap for you. <laughs> Look at that. And look here. Ain't that the greatest thing you ever did see? Gold leaf flush toilet. <laughs> look. You can sit on it, close the door. <laughs> hey. I've been saving this one for you. Come here. We worked on this for a long time. Now watch this. What's it? Sliding doors. It's our own kitchen. Look at that sink. <laughs> Ain't that a something? Look here, we got a new fridge there. We get, get ice cubes in it. And look here. Olives. Got a stove. Got pots and pans. You can cook us up something real nice. Me? Sure. I mean, Ma and Wappy can't cook for us the rest of our life. Not now. Now that we got our own apartment and all. I don't cook. Now, for the second favor, Rocky. Just tell her that a guy from a big New York agency was in here, caught her act. Okay, let's have a quiet, folks. Right. Yeah, but I... Just do quiet it. down, please. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the new Rockies takes great pleasure in presenting Miss Anna Boyd. That's her now. We've played the game of stay away. But it cost more than I can pay Without you, I can't make my way I surrender I may seem proud I may act gay it's just a pose, I'm not that way, cause deep down in my heart I say, I surrender. How come you never get your ass out of bed? Well, it's the place you seem to like it the most. I wouldn't give you six to five on that, sweetheart. Hey, I thought you were going to take me to the races today. I was. I entered you in the fifth race, but the stewards objected. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Now we got the W.C. Field show. <laughs> I got to go to a business meeting. Oh, great. How come I don't get to go anywhere anymore? How come? Yeah, how come? As you always open your big trap and embarrass me, that's how come. <laughs> Christ! <laughs> hey, catch. Oh, you goddamn punk! Get your ass out of here! Go back to your pigsty, you dirty bastard!
Miss Borg. Can I see you for just a moment, Miss Borg? Jesus, now we got the full of brush, man. Miss Borg. I said I'm coming. Will you keep your pants on? Okay, Buster, what's your pitch? Miss Anna Borg. Who wants to know? I'm from Lucas, Herman, and Heller, the New York theatrical agents. Oh, sure. Well, if I could uh, come in for a couple of minutes, I have a proposition to make you. Mr. I've had more propositions than you've had cups of coffee. Well, this one happens to be genuine. I was at the club last night, didn't Rocky tell you? The agent! Uh-huh. Come in. Thank you. Here, sit down. Uh, thank you. Uh -huh. ah, look at that. <laughs> Some joker. Not loaded, you know. Oh, no. <clears throat> well, Miss Borg, <laughs> this is going to sound like something you read in true romances, but, uh, well, a client of Lucas, Sherman, and Heller is putting together a show for Broadway. This Missouri millionaire has seen your act more times than you'd believe, and he's suggested, you know, in fact, he has insisted that you be one of the stars of this show. Me? That's right. He admires your work, and, uh... Hey, is this some kind of gag? No, this is the way it happens in the show business, Miss Borg. Obviously, you would, you would have to audition and everything. In New York? Yeah, naturally, we'd pick up the tab. Oh, and they want me to sing and dance and all that stuff? And be beautiful. Oh. Hey, do I know this guy, this millionaire? Well, I figure he's got some ideas in that direction. Oh. <laughs> and they got a leading man? They sure have, yeah. Yeah, who is it? Miss Borg, hold on to your hat. Yeah. Rudy Valley. Rudy Valley? Rudy, uh, the vagabond lover, Rudy Valley, yes. Rudy Valley? And me, we're going to sing together? You sure are. Oh, that's fantastic! <laughs> it's just like you said. It's right out of true romances. <laughs> <coughs> what do we do next? Well, you can appreciate that Broadway appearance leads to newspapers and the radio showing great interest. I don't mind that. Oh, no, but, uh... May, may I call you Anna? Oh, of course. My pleasure. <laughs> Well, Anna, uh, of course, the newspapers can really hurt a star. Would, would, you, would you sit down? Newspapers can really hurt a star, and I... You know, I'm just going to have to be frank with you and lay it right on the line. We're kind of worried about some of your past associations. People like, uh, with the guy in this Blandish case, Connor. Is that his name, Frankie Connor? So what? Any star entitled to a private life? Would that it was so, Anna. Anyway, we've been into this with our publicity people, and I think they've come up with a pretty good angle. Yeah, what is it? Well, they were thinking along the lines of a small town girl uh, gets mixed up with the wrong crowd. Yeah. And, uh, and she decides to reform, and she gives the police some little bit of information, some clue that breaks the whole case wide open. Hey, what do you think I am, a stoolie? Anna, that is not being a stoolie. That is doing your duty as a citizen. What do I know? I don't know nothing about it. Well, didn't you talk to Connor after the snatch? Well, what if I did? Did he call you? I don't think he had anything to do with this blandish case. Mm -hmm. Where did he call you from? A guy called Johnny Hutchins, his place. Did you tell that to the police? Hey, what the hell is this? Are you a cop or something? I told you, Anna, I'm from Lucas, Herman, and Heller. Yeah, well, I just realized something. I never heard of them three guys. Come on in, open up. I just went out without my goddamn heater. How can one guy... Anna, I very thoughtfully wrapped it up for you in her nightie. Right there. If I were you, I wouldn't try to get it at him. 
What are you doing here, Fenner? Fenner? You know him? Anna. You ain't been shooting off your big fat trap. Anna's been real friendly. Well, I think I'll be running along. You get that. Oh, you all right? In regards to Broadway, baby. You goddamn punk! Are you all right? What did that guy want? He gave me some silly crap about being in show business. Then he starts asking questions about the Blandish case. Blandish case? Oh, I'll get you a towel. I'll take care of it. Blandish case? What kind of questions? What? What kind of questions about the Blandish case? Oh, just some stuff about Frankie. Here. Huh? Do you want a drink? No. No, but get me some ice. Okay. I got plenty of ice. What stuff about Frankie? Oh, just... Just if I talked to him after this match. Yeah? What'd you tell him? So I told him. Give me that. I told him that I did talk to Frankie. Frankie called me from old Johnny's place. You told him what? Yeah. Well, what the hell do I owe Frankie for? He ran out on me. Here. You dumb broad. What are you trying to do? Ruin the whole thing? Ruin what whole thing? Wait a minute, wait a minute. What, what thing? What thing? I... Shut up! Oh. Did, did you know my Frankie was out there? Did you? Shut up! How come you knew so much about it? What did you well, do? I told it? you it was going to ruin the whole thing. I ruined it, you bastard! You bastard! What did you do? You were really dumb. Let's go inside. Who tipped you off I was coming out today, Johnny? <laughs> okay, Johnny. I want to talk about the night that Frankie Connor came out here with the Blandish girl. Man, I ain't got nothing to tell you. Johnny, me. listen. We can do this the hard way, or we can do it the easy way. It's your choice. Everybody knows that my... my memory is real bad. I like it out here, Johnny. <laughs> they break up this Blandish case. Yeah, you go straight to the can. How'd you like to wind up your days in jail, Johnny? Uh, Johnny, just once. Just once. Why don't you wind up ahead of the game, huh? Have they paid you off yet? <laughs> There's a big reward, Johnny. You'll get a piece of it. I will. Did Frankie Connor and Joe Bailey come out here that night? They still here. I buried them myself out the back. Who killed them? <laughs> Maybe you better ask Slim Grissom about that. Now, Whoppy. Hey. Now. 
Look at this. Doug, give me a hand here. Hey, Bennett. Hey, Bennett, come on. Time to get up. Come on, let's go. Come on, Bennett. Everything's all right. Come on, let's get going. Guzzle this stuff down. What about the cops? <laughs> sure. What kind of deal do you think I get from them, huh? No, you don't leave my sight. Not that your old man says we got a deal. Slim will kill you. Yeah? Now, where do you think Slim will be, baby? In jail, that's where. He ain't gonna be killing nobody. Hey! I'm getting you out of this mess, and you don't seem to be too crazy about it. Just exactly what did you and Slim do all that time? We danced. Kind of get a taste for all those days and nights with him. I'm talking about making a deal. Maybe your old man won't be too keen on getting you back. You ain't exactly the same package you paid a million bucks for. <laughs> Not anymore, you ain't. Leave me alone. Don't worry about me, sweetheart. I'm a broad-minded guy. Come on, sweetheart, we got time. <laughs> Come on, what the hell's the difference? You let Slim do it, didn't you? You don't have to. No! <laughs> but you're gonna. <laughs> oh, that's it, sweetheart. Where am I? You don't understand. Ma wanted her killed, Slim. Honest, Slim. It's the truth.
fancy dress, huh? I always thought you were a fancy dresser. You don't look so fancy now. I don't, I don't, I, I told him he'd kill him. But you, Dreyas. I think she trays. Sergeant, we're going in in two minutes. In that case, we have to fight it out, right? Okay. We fight it out. I'll come up from here, Ma. I've never been much of a one for shooting. <laughs> You ain't gonna run out on us, are you, Doc? Oh, Gladys, you just can't take on the whole Kansas City police force. They don't like the stakes. You shouldn't play the game. This is Police Chief McLean talking. The club's surrounded. You have exactly two minutes. Two minutes to come out with your hands up. If not, we bust in. Do you hear that? Two minutes from now. You heard what the man said. Gladys, be reasonable. We go out. We got a chance. They still got to prove us guilty. Doc, I've looked after you for a long time. Now you just have to look after yourself. One minute. See you. What the hell was that? The Blandish girl and Slim Grissom. Two troopers, get that car! Thank <laughs> you. 
good. Let the coroner through. I did say there was a woman killed in the shooting. That's the kind of people we're dealing with, see? I mean, they kill an old lady. I mean, what do I do now, huh? I mean, I'm telling you, they... Sad, ain't it? I love my ma. Ma. Boy, this is some layout. Why the switch, huh, Fenner? Yeah, I still can't believe it. Yeah, Romeo and Julia. Say, this is real comfy. Tell me. You think she really fell for that half-wit? I mean, after all, this is a real love nest. You know, I read about these society broads somewhere. A lot of them just want to get laid by truck drivers. Big, dirty, sweaty guys. How about cops? Hey, Fanta, come on. I don't see any ball and chain around here. All this fancy stuff. Take a look. She wasn't exactly on bread and water. There's a double lock outside that door. And what about these windows? Who knows? Maybe they were scared of burglars. So what are you going to do? This way, sir. Mr. Blandish. Captain McLean. Mr. Fenner, the phone message said my daughter's alive. Yes, sir. You seen her? She was in a car with Grissom. After all this time? I don't believe it. This was their room, Mr. Blandish. She was living here with Grissom. Kind of like man and wife. That's a monstrous thing to say, Captain McClay. Well, take a look. What the captain is trying to say, Mr. Blandish, is it looks as though... looks as though she was forced to stay in this room in person. You don't know much about my daughter, Mr. Fenner. She would certainly never tolerate anything like this. 
I don't think she had much choice. There is no choice in such matters. Mr. Blandish, Wilson is not the kind of a guy that you reason with over a couple of whiskey sours at the country club. He's a vicious, murdering psychopath. Either you do what he says or you wind up dead. Then maybe it'd be better if she were dead. You're gonna need help. She'll be in a pretty shocked condition. We ought to have a doctor standing by. I think that sort of decision should be left to me, Mr. Fenner. What are the police doing? They won't get out of this state. It's just a matter of time. You'll keep me informed. I want to be there when you find her. That looks like you got the message, huh, Sherlock? Father of the year, right? I would just like to cry on that shoulder, McLean. Might be him, son. Now you go get yourself in that telephone and call the police. Sure thing, Pa. You okay? Lay down on my jacket. Morning. You get some sleep now. Okay? Slim, have you thought about where we're going? No. El Paso, maybe. You'll be caught, won't you? Then what happens? They hang you. It don't scare me none. I get caught, I guess you get to go home, huh? I guess so. I ain't fooling myself. You like going on, won't you? I don't know. It's been such a long time. I just don't know. I suppose I'm a little scared about what everybody's going to say. Maybe Eddie was right. Maybe my father won't be so happy to see me. You kidding? You let that Eddie smart mouth you would talk like that? Your daddy will be crazy to see you again. Just like I'd be to see my ma. Of course, they still got to kill me first. Slim. I'm not worth dying for. No 
Nobody's worth that. I ain't got you. I don't care what happens. That doesn't make sense. Haven't you ever loved nobody? Not like that. Nobody's ever loved me like that either. They've said it lots of times, but... I guess they just didn't mean it the way you mean it. Hey, That makes me better than all them college boys then, huh? Slim. Don't get yourself killed. Don't die for me. Please. You'd really care if I died? Hey. That's a real nice thing to say. Get some sleep and stop worrying. Don't you worry about me, okay? Come on. You want some more water or anything? Good night. Inviting the press, your bright idea. How often do I get to bust a case like this, Fenner? Does she have to be subjected to all this, Captain McLean? It's a free country, Mr. Blandish. How do we know he won't kill her? Well, he's let her live up till now. We gotta figure he'll keep on letting her live. Disgusting. Maybe I shouldn't even be here. If she gets out of there, she's gonna need your help. She sure as hell gonna need somebody's help. Chris? This is Chief McLean. We have 
have the barn completely surrounded. You have no hope of escape. Send the girl out first. Come out with your hands up. You hear that? Send the girl out first, and then come out with your hands up. Don't matter now. Please, Slim. Get away from him. What? Get away from him! Did you hear me? Get away from him! trying to stay alive. Was that worth staying alive for? He wouldn't let me go. He loved me. Can't you understand? No, I can't. And I guess I never will. Mr. Fenner here will look out for you. Blandish. When did you get out of here? What about the rats? Oh, 